Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at pots and capsules. And um, so what happens with with the flower is that some of the plants, when they have flowered, they develop uh, like a pod at the end of the flower, and then it turns into um, things dry up and it turns into seeds. And then some of them are um, self spreading so they they fall on the ground and then next year you'll get flowers from that some of them you need to pick and then um, plant yourself next year or so uh, but essentially this is what i'm going to look at today and for that i have already everything set up and i'm going to just quickly tell you what you will need as well if you want to join in so i am picking this ink which is by diamine and it's uh, the color sepia and it's a gorgeous light color so it's going to go within that brown kind of um, color scheme that I'm going to work in and um, I'm also using the dip pan this is the manga comic dip pan all of the links to all of the products I'm trying to um, share here today with you will be down below so if you're interested in any of them have a look and you'll find them there um, so that's um, for the drawing part for um, for the watercolor part I will use this Jackson's quill brush 10 zero and then watercolor wise I still have some of these remaining from the previous tutorials and I will use a combination of them and um, so the the main color is the Conacredon deep gold which is just over here and that's kind of the the color scheme that these pots will be but I also decided to pull out this transparent red oxide which is a gorgeous color um, and I think it will be nice uh, bit of addition so I'm just going to it's a lot browner on the actual tube than it is in reality it's got a bit more red in there so I'm just going to take a little bit out of it I'll try to leave the links to the other colors that I will be using um, on here. So this is the Prussian green over here and then a couple more colors. I think this was the ultramarine turquoise and gold green and a few other colors. So predominantly will be yellows and oranges with a little bit of green. So to wake up the colors that have already dried up in the palette I'm just going to do one spray um, and even spray the fresh ones because they do need some moisture I love working with this muslin cloth to get excess water out of my brush or in between colors um, just to control things really so that's a great little uh, tip right there okay the um, only remaining thing that is left to mention is the sketchbook itself. I'm working in Stillman and Burn hardcover sketchbook this time and this is the ring bound and I will leave the size and the info of it below. This is the um, beta series so it's good for watercolors, nice and sturdy and um, thick paper. So to begin with I will start by drawing out these pots just to give myself an idea so I'm looking at um, this encyclopedia really that I have recently ordered <laughs> it is absolutely stunning never up never down never like a theme in a song clever feeling high feeling low same time feel so right then i'm wrong hoping i'll be fine but i get up i always do i never think i always do never thought i wouldn't jump oh what a fool but if i fall i will get up again
All right, so now we're ready for the watercolor part. And that is usually my favorite because I can just enjoy adding color. And um, this is when things become alive. Let me just zoom you in a little bit. All right, so here we're going to start by just looking at the pots. And the main color is quite red. And I think I'm going to start by going into this transparent red oxide. And if you feel like there is way too much pigment, what I would do is just wash it out and clean out the brush and control it that way. Also remember you always have time to do uh, a bit of glazing at the end. So look what, what happens once I just use clean water and um, go over the ink. So I'm going to break down the color a little bit. I'm going to go into that um, quinacridone deep gold, which is a similar color, but a slightly different uh, tone. Okay, so this is where it is. Now, I could leave it and then glaze over it with a bit of green, or I could wait just a tiny little bit until things are not as liquid and then add a bit of green. So it won't be glazing, but it will definitely add a little bit of interest. Um, I will look at now another color. And I'm just quite literally randomly picking these colors. Now, this weird one, um, I wouldn't recommend using it again because what happens is, actually I'm going to clean that out. This is the Dr. P.H. Martin's um, Hydra's watercolor and it creates this kind of mess when it dries up and you want, you can't re-wet it basically. It's, um, I'm not entirely sure whether it's a dye-based or a pigment-based watercolor, but I don't like working with it once it's dried up and um, to me it's like unworkable so I'm just going to wipe it off because otherwise it just creates mass. It dries into these little particles which are just quite of off-putting. Okay so I'm going to go into the real watercolor and add a little bit of green just in some of these bits here. Um, as you can see, I'm leaving a lot of white and I like that because that creates texture that really looks like a dried up pod of, of seeds. And some of them actually have this green in some of these top bits as well. So actually I'll, I'll add it here. Let's see what happens. So the trick is don't repeat the same thing on every single pot. You don't want to do that. You want to mix up color as you go and make it more fun. So this time I'm going to start with this beautiful transparent red oxide, gorgeous color. I have definitely been more into the neutrals lately and I'm going to add it at the bottom. Now also I'm being quite cautious with the amount and stopping just before I do too much. Also keep in mind water control is quite important because otherwise things just lose detail and become one big puddle of mass. So I want to connect these colors and so that's what I'm doing and just touching them a little bit and they will flow into one another. Now before this green dries I am 
going to go into this lovely yellow which is nickel nickel azo yellow and again as you can see connecting them and letting them flow into one another I hope you're having a good weather in in the part of the world that you are um, we're having a bit of a weird one at the moment it's been bucketing down bucketing or bucking down well you can correct me down below I know some of you love doing it <laughs> so yeah it's been really raining quite um, heavily and sort of gone a bit windy and cold and and all of that so it hasn't been too pleasant and I actually ordered a sand pit for Mason now that he's going to be staying two days a week home uh, for the for this month uh, and also the rest of the summer I just wanted him to have a bit more fun at home and so yeah uh, not really the weather to play in the sand now so I'm waiting for it to get a bit more warm Okay, so I'm just continuing basically exactly the same thing, just using the very tip of my brush. And you can see in some some ways, uh, in some pots, I'm adding a bit more green, a bit more orange, just kind of playing around with the base three colors, which is the browns, the yellows, and the greens. And that is all that I'm doing. Now that there is this lovely um, dark green, which I'm going to just add here. At the minute, I'm not thinking about the stalks just yet. Uh, I will get there in a minute. And then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow here just to warm things up. And then obviously we need something nice here. So I'm going to use this. Um, so the difference between the transparent red oxide and quinacridone deep gold is that the uh, first one is too, is a little bit, um, it's got more of kind of like a red in there. Um, and then the quinacridum deep gold is is warmer but equally both of them are beautiful and the transparent red oxide tends to granulate quite nicely okay so a little bit more here but i think i will actually this time mix it up with yellow because i don't want it to be too brown i want to to have some interest here and again, can uh, touch them to create that merge. Now, as you can see, we have lost, lost that little gap that I have drawn in for the seeds. Uh, and that we can work on once it's dried. And that's when you'll need to do some glazing and possibly use like a really detailed brush, something really tiny, teeny tiny, where you can literally just dot on those little um, seeds in these dried up pots okay so now let's do the um, stems the stems seem to be a little bit more red with a bit of pink actually which is something like alizarin crimson just somewhere on the side even because I really need just a little tiny bit
else do we have here? Just keep on going into your palette and into different corners, mixing colors together. Sometimes you get a really nice bit of a surprise and you might come up with a mix that you really like. Okay, and then here I think I'd go for a bit more yellowish again. So here. You can actually hear the rain now. I don't know if you can pick it up on the microphone or whether the microphone can pick it, pick it up. Right, so... Oh, okay, I like it that way actually. All right, so this is that, and then I need to dry it. So I'm going to use my heat gun, and then we're going to do the detailing. Okay, so it's um, semi-dry. So what I'm gonna do is I have got this pink, um, and it might be actually a better idea to mix it up with something really fine and really small. So let's see, this is a four zero, so it's a super tiny little brush. So I'm going to take this, what was it, a lucerne crimson, I think. It's super intense, so you won't need that much. And I'm going to uh, mix it up here with that um, transparent red oxide. And that makes it a little bit reddish, obviously. And or even more radish and then I'm going to go back in and just dot it along here like that so that creates a lovely little texture and don't remember now where I had them but it really doesn't matter just dot them like this again remembering that you're only going to get the dots when you touch the dry bit of um, paper because if you don't then it will be wet and if it's too wet the detail won't be there so make sure you just go over the dry like that that kind of looks lovely immediately and then keep on rotating I learned this trick from um, Billy Shawell when I took her course um, to rotate the brush in the paint and that what that does is it kind of turns the bristles into a nice point if they're losing a point and then um let's see maybe I'll shoot add some some in here as well yes yeah, so I'll go into this one and I'll add it here just a little bit right there like that you can build it up build it up a little bit if you want and you could even mix up a slightly redder color and just make sure it's nice and thick actually this brush the point is gone here so I need to get one which has a better point See, yeah, this one is has a good point. This, this is a three zero, but similar thing. It's different brands, so okay. Now with the slightly more red color, I'm just going to dot here and there, not on the entire thing, but just to sort of break it up a little. That creates a bit more dimension. like that and yeah looks lo lovely all right so with the same color I am now going to actually um, put it into the little stalks here now I don't like too much detail in the stalks so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to literally do it right in the top here 
and then I can see there is a little bit of that pink on the leaf so I'm just going to try do that without kind of creating an overkill here if you find something is a little too harsh you can then simply have a wet brush ready and just touch it to blend it in a little bit and that creates a softer edge and we'll take uh, get rid of that harshness and then we'll do one here just make sure you don't do it too thickly and then just again softening it out and one more here and same thing some colors might be more staining than others and they might be harder to move but essentially this is pretty much it what I could do actually is just with a fresher green using the same kind of detailed brush I'm just going to go and glaze a little bit over the top making sure I'm mixing different colors so it doesn't look like I'm just repeating it and I'm just adding a tiny little bit of detail onto these bits here and that's all that I'm doing oops that's too much so I'm just going to add a little bit of this and then just move it out like that and a bit more here that's it you can still keep kind of going back and forth and having a look where you want more and less but that is it now all right i hope you enjoyed this this is super fun to look at different parts of flowers or different um, stages of of their lives and yeah just you know take it to your art journal and and have some fun so thanks for watching and see you soon